Today we present the newest member of BMW's X family. From the front, it strongly echoes the X3, and guess what? The technology is based on the X3 as well. But from the back, it's a coupe, like the BMW X6. In price and features, though, it's more like an X5. So the BMW X4 isn't really an SUV, but an SAC, or Sports Activity Coupe. Let's see what it can do. Its forerunner, the X6, caused a stir when it appeared. Many thought it looked too massive, but the car sold well. Its concept has now been adapted for the smaller X4. Together with the Grand Coupe, it completes the carmaker's 4 Series. It's aimed at SUV drivers who want to stand out from the crowd. This is an on... BMW's Richard Jacobi says it's a car for SUV drivers in the premium mid-range class who are looking for special performance and unique design. On the outside, the X4 is brawny and confident. From the side, it recalls the silhouette of the X6. There's a new double creasing over the rear wheel. Cargo space ranges from 500 to 1400 liters. Inside, like all four series models, it's high quality and elegant, while still offering a touch of sportiness. The rear bench is spacious enough for longer trips. In back, the X4 is designed as a two plus one seat. A bit tight for the one in the middle, but behind the driver, Sasha has enough space for his knees, and more importantly, despite the coupe roof, enough headroom too. But in reverse, the coupe shape does cause problems. Looking through the back window, you see practically nothing. But the car offers two possibilities. In reverse, there's the 360-degree overhead view or a rear-view camera. The basic version with the engine we tested can be had for 58,000 euros in Germany. But our model had every available extra feature raising the price to a lofty 78,000 euros. Richard Jacobi says the X4's technology is based on the X3, but it puts a greater emphasis on performance and design. It's a lifestyle car, a new take on BMW's familiar X6 concept. Together with its siblings, the X3, X5, and X6, the X4 is built in BMW Spartanburg, South Carolina plant. North America is one of its main sales markets. With global demand for the X models undiminished, BMW is investing a billion dollars in the facility. Within two years, annual production capacity will expand by 50%, from 300,000 units to 450,000. About 70% of the cars built here are exported throughout the globe. Richard Jacobi explains the price difference between the X3 and X4. The X4 has much more generous standard features. Basically, all the X3's optional sports and performance features are standard on the X4. Like performance control, sports steering, sports leather steering wheel with paddles, and sports automatic transmission. The X4 also has rear-assisted parking, an automatic rear hatch standard, and in most markets, Xenon headlights and 18-inch wheels. The X4 is just as happy on trails and unpaved roads as on the highway. It has the same off-road specs as the X3. BMW sees its customers mainly in the U.S. and China, but Germany and Italy have enough interested buyers, too. But in Sasha's opinion, the X4 is too classy for those kinds of surfaces. And at 78,000 euros, it's also quite expensive. Visibility in back is limited, but the car is a real looker.
As Mata says, the VW Polo has its GTI version, and the DS3 has its racing, the sports car variant of Citroën's compact model. And now there's a limited edition of 100 convertibles. It's not a full convertible, as these side rails remain in place when the roof's down. But then you can also open it when zipping along. And then it's time for fun in the sun. Hardly any of its competitors offers a convertible version, let alone with this kind of performance. The DS3 Racing's 1.6 liter engine can harness 152 kilowatts of power. That takes this little rocket from zero to 100 in just six and a half seconds. Top speed is 235 kilometers an hour. The DS3 Racing may be fast, but is it also fast on the curves? The potential's there, but you need a steady hand. Montes reminds us of a problem with all powerful front-wheel drive cars, including the DS3 Racing. When you really step on the gas, the engine has a powerful effect on steering. It's not nearly as nice as in an all-wheel drive or a rear-wheel drive car. What certainly is nice is the exterior of the DS3, which also works in the ragtop version. Although the DS3 is known for its customizing options, the racing version is available only in the matte, moondark body color. Plenty of carbon defines the racing's look. One quirky trait is the cargo hatch. Monta says when you return from shopping, having left the roof open and want to stow your purchase, you'll need patience. First the roof has to shift upwards, and then you can open the hatch. The DS3 convertible offers 245 liters of cargo space, but loading isn't simple because all you've got is a cramped and impractical opening. But back to the roof. Better to close it before going shopping anyway, if only for security's sake. The completely open roof also has its disadvantages. Think visibility. When the roof is down, the rear view mirror is blocked. Even if you turn around, you can't see much. But the generous side mirrors and big windows do help. And taking curves, you should be looking forward anyway. On country roads, the DS3 turns into a little power pack that keeps its driver comfortable. Mata says he especially likes the seating. He's well positioned with good lateral support. The side bolsters aren't too stiff and give a little if you're a bit wider in the waist. The only thing that could be bigger is the actual seat. It's a bit short. Inside we find reflections of the exterior color scheme. Again, lots of carbon. And the racing is especially pretty when you let it sing. Hear that? <laughs> it's the sound of excitement. And when the roof's down, you hear it even more. The racing takes its name seriously. It accelerates fast, brakes fast, takes curves well, and is fun when shifting. If it only weren't for that stiff steering during fast curves. The DS3 racing convertible is definitely a fun car, but personally, Montes wouldn't pay such a high price for a car in which the fun factor far outweighs the practical side. 38,490 euros in Germany isn't exactly spare change, but perhaps the idea of being one of only 100 is compensation. 
and the enjoyment factor could clinch the deal. So if you like muscle, design, and exclusivity, you might just fall for the DS3 Racing. Six hundred seventy exhibitors from forty-four countries came to Essen for the Reifen, the world's leading tire fair, to present their newest products. This year's hot topic was tire pressure control systems. Starting November 1st, they'll be mandatory on new cars in the EU. The regular valve is replaced by this orange one, a sensor, and it passes the data to an onboard computer. On this prototype, the sensor is vulcanized straight into the rubber at the factory. This tire has twice the running surface, but less rolling friction. It's not likely to go into production, but it might inspire further innovation. The rims, too, are riding the green wave. A mineral-based material is used wherever metal isn't absolutely necessary. That makes the rims much lighter. Over 60,000 people converged on the motorsport arena in Oschersleben for the 2014 Opel Meet. Fans united under the Lightning Bolt logo. The owners polish and buff until their darlings dazzle. But clean here is a different kind of clean. When tuners say a car is clean, they mean free of what they see as needless gizmos and gadgets, even under the hood. Montan Powell is an Opel tuner. He says, as long as the weather's nice, the washer system can go. He'll wipe the windshield himself. He can even do without power steering and many other trifles, as he calls them. Other owners like to add features on or alter what's there. Rear hinge doors and a whiskey lounge on the back seat. Even matching slippers. Some Opel drivers compete to see how low they can get their skirts' hemlines. Marco Rota puts lots of work into his car. Too much, he says. He spent every winter for 10 years tinkering with it. Fans of the Manta B like to call it the brick layers Porsche. They show lots of ingenuity in their alterations. A sunroof that can be stowed in the trunk if desired and, as a highlight, rear hinge doors. Andre Gini says this is one of a kind. He's never seen another one like it. This Omega is another rarity. It was a diplomat's car custom built with six doors. Other tuners copied the idea. Only six of the six-door versions were sold in Germany, and a few more modified versions in Britain. But this particular car is a real, original Opel limousine. Opel's history is also on show. Time-honored names from ships and the sea, like the Capitaine, Commodore, and Cadet. The fans at the meet are every bit as diverse as the cars. Werner Schöne has been coming for years. He says there's always a few live wires here, but that's part of the fun. He's always amazed at the money the young owners put into their cars. The way they preen and glean and clean and polish their cars is a sight in itself. Keeping in touch with its customers, Opel has brought the fastest Astra of the current generation to the meet the extreme with bucket seats and lots of carbon fiber this prototype is the dream of many an opal driver opal's jörg schrott says the meet is an ideal platform for communicating with fans he's here to offer them a chance to take the opc around the track the driver's safety center is standing by they're interested in the car maker's commitment to motorsports or at least in the party afterwards with friends He's glad everything's running smoothly. 
Christoph Kreigenings had a dream come true. He got to ride shotgun in a real Astra race car with pro driver Joachim Winkelhock, who demonstrated how fast you can go on the Oschersleben track. For Winkelhock, it's always interesting to see the passengers' different reactions. They have little experience with actual racing. He says some are delighted, others get very quiet. It's fun for him to watch people experience what it's really like inside a race car. When it's not just going for a pleasant spin, it's hard physical work that varies according to the track and the car. But most people are thrilled, and it's a fun experience. Christoph says it was amazing to see what a professional race car driver can get out of it. He almost thought they'd lose control a couple of times, but Joachim Winkelhock tamed the beast. His fast braking was also impressive. Then Christoph takes the car around the track on his own. The experience only reinforces his feelings. Once with Opal, always with Opal. Mercedes presents the new heavy haulage version of the Actros, the Actros SLT. It's a truck with big ambitions, a robust high-tech vehicle with a pulling weight limit of 250 tons. Georg Staskiewicz from Mercedes says the new SLT is part of the recent revamp of the Actro series. The heavy haulage truck is designed to comply with the Euro 6 emission standards. Meeting those standards meant making some changes to the engine, so Mercedes decided to rethink the entire series. And this is the result. But designing a new heavyweight truck is a complex matter. Andreas Ott from Mercedes explains why. The SLT was designed to handle very large loads, and that required some special steps. A heavy haulage vehicle can't be tested on ordinary roads because they have a 44-ton weight limit. So Mercedes needed a special testing ground to put the truck through its paces. And Mercedes wanted real-life customer feedback. After all, this truck is a working vehicle designed to move heavy goods and construction machinery. Mercedes asked clients in Switzerland and Germany and put their feedback into the new design. That was a key part of the design process. Auch die Rückmeldung von den Kunden zu bekommen, die wiederum bei uns in die Entwicklung eingeflossen sind, das ist ein ganz wichtiger Aspekt in dieser Entwicklung gewesen. Truck driver Hannes Walla gets behind the wheel to check it all out. It's a monster with a 460 kilowatt engine with a torque output of 3000 newton meters. It's all powered by a 15.6-liter V6 engine. But Val is an old hand, and he knows how to tame the beast. Hanna says the truck does a fantastic job in terms of ergonomics. The layout is the same as in the rest of the new Actros line. The shift lever is positioned on the steering wheel and is easily accessible. The dashboard and instrument layout is excellent. So for the driver, it's just about perfect. The the cab is generously proportioned, with well over two meters of headroom. Journalist Pierre Kutzner agrees. The first thing you notice is its roominess. There's plenty of room to stand. Materials and workmanship are excellent, too. In a longer layover, spending a few hours in the cab is no problem. It's comfortable, almost homey, and really quite impressive. Das ist einfach beeindruckend. This grill behind the cab hides the cooling tower. It's positioned so that even at low speeds the truck won't draw in exhaust air. The driver can tilt the cab at the push of a button. The cooling tower stays in position. The 16-speed automatic transmission and the turbo retarder clutch are also technical standouts. 
Andreas Ott explains that when it comes to heavy haulage trucks, the two challenges are starting up and maneuvering. That means you want a turbo retarder clutch. It fills with oil when you need full power. The fluid can be cooled, which is the real advantage. The heat that's generated is then discharged through the cooling unit. Once the truck is underway, the regular dry clutch comes into action. Then the Actros drives like a regular truck, with a regular transmission. Driver Hannes Wallis says you really notice the difference. Starting up a heavy truck like this requires a great deal of power. With the turbo clutch, you can even start the Actros on a slope without rolling backwards. Once the truck is moving, the turbo clutch is switched off. The truck switches to a conventional friction clutch, so there's little slippage. That also helps lower fuel consumption a bit. And once you're on the road, the fully automatic 16-speed transmission makes for a very smooth ride. In both comfort and performance, the Actros SLT is the perfect beast of burden. The two friends, Ivan Charou and Rafael Savaya, have just arrived in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in their 1967 VW Fusca, Portuguese for Beetle. They've covered it with the very same slogans they had on their old 61 Beetle when they drove it to the World Cup in Mexico 44 years ago. Back then, it took them 22 days nonstop to reach Mexico City. But they were there watching Brazil win the championship title. The young men partied together with their star players until dawn. Those aren't the only memories they brought back. Rafael remembers Pele's impressive headers, amazingly loud. It was louder than Rafael could shoot with his feet. They decided to repeat their adventure for this year's World Cup. With any luck, they'll be cheering their team on to the title. That would be perfect. And this time, it would be even in their home country. Rafael explains that everyone wanted to hear their stories from their first trip, but they hadn't taken any pictures and never wrote a book. So they decided to relive their experience and catch it on camera. So this time, their friends and family will be able to share in the fun. At one time, the streets of Brazil were teeming with millions of VW Beetles. In the 1950s, they were everywhere here, and everyone wanted one. Soccer star Pele had a whole garage full. In the tournament in Sao Paulo, the, the best score in the league, mm -hmm. always they get a, a Vox fan that time as a, as a prize. You know? I was uh, four or five times you know, the best okay. score. <laughs> I have all the, 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 the selection, the collection of, of Vox. I... The Beetle is still a cold car in Brazil. Whether tuned or factory original, low riding or classic, the Brazilians love their bug-eyed bug, their Fusca. Vintage car fans get together in collector's clubs all across the country. This Fusca fan agrees. Brazil is wild about the Beetle. Maybe it's the shape that's so appealing. It's a real eye-catcher. Even young people love the Beetle. Something special. That's exactly what Rafael and Ivan are hoping for, too. Another chance to cheer on their team and to celebrate another World Cup victory. Like their Beetle, real Brazilian soccer fans keep going and going and going.